I'm Walter O'Neill and this is Antiques Arena. I've been collecting and buying antiques for over 15 years. Now I've decided to start making videos so you can come with me on my journey around the hotels, antique fairs, track shops and flea markets. See what I buy, how I buy it. Take a look here, it's got, there's nothing plated here, everything is solid. Um, my first episode is ready to work, follow me and I'll put them up as often as I can. Um, I buy anything, doesn't matter what it is, metalware, brass, copper, glass, antiques, it's basically a real life treasure hunt. Um, join us and watch me as I work. As I pan over all the, um, the items here, you can see there's tea services, spoons, tongs, there's even Chinese porcelain thrown in the mix. A couple of oil lamps at the back. Um, you'll see two very large dinner plate fulls of gold and sovereigns. Um, my videos are all filmed with spy cameras. The people I film, I edit their faces out so nobody knows I'm filming. Everything is done to give you as realistic a view as I can. I don't want anybody acting for the cameras. So what you see is real life. Follow me, you never know. You may watch me buy some of this stuff. If the video is a bit shaky here and there, I am sorry. It's the best I can do with the spy cameras. I do try and add in the footage of the uh, items. Um, but I do try and select the better footage out of it all. Here's a group of items, or tools if you like, that I take with me to the boot sale. You have the large scales there, which weighs anything over one kilo, which will be large lumps of silver. Make sure you test all the scales. Here I have a double strength jeweler's eye loop, and now a small jeweler scales for rings and fine, fine light jewellery. Does up to, up to one kilo and down to 0 0.1 of a gram. This here is the um, acid. It's very dangerous. Carry it in a secure case. That's for testing your gold and silver if it's not marked. Obviously, you need your wallet and your bag to go over your shoulder just to put in your um, your pieces as you purchase them. You know, you slip a bit of gold into your bag, it's a lot quicker and more efficient for when you're moving about the stalls fast. Here I am again, another house clearance man. He's got everything, bric a brac, games, toys, art, everything. Here's a piece of Chinese porcelain just chucked in a box, not even wrapped, in amongst games and cars. I instantly uh, pick it up and purchase the piece. And I'll show you some images now of close ups. You can see it's a piece of blank de chin, which is white porcelain. It has the impressed rain marks on the back. Late 19th to early 20th century. Here's a new stall. I haven't seen this one before. He's got all his items laid out on the floor. What I'm showing you here is a group of um, authenticated um, autographs on portraits. Some musicians, some actors. But a nice collectible little lot. This next group of stalls I've put into the video. I don't purchase anything off them. I put it into the video just so you have an idea of um, what I have to do make my judgment out of every week. Um, I have to look at these things, you know, ceramics, glass, scientific instruments. They're all laid out nice, but they are very expensive. I have to distinguish what is worth paying the price that's got a small profit left on there. Um, I also have to be able to distinguish a reproduction from an original uh, item. This stall that we're looking at in particular now, most of the scientific instruments are reproduction. However, a lot of his glass and ceramics are original, so they don't separate it on a boot sale, they don't always know.
this stall here is one of my main sources of stock um, he's here every week uh, he comes up from England over the bridge I walked up to the um, his table and instantly saw the decanter as you saw um, it's early 19th century very heavily cut English um, it's got the mercurial step cut in on the neck and the um, large diamond cut in um, sadly the stopper is damaged but the bottles in really good condition um, I'll show you some close-up images now it's a real nice example um, of an early decanter Here's a good example as to why you've got to make sure you look in every single uh, box. I walk up to this stall here and they have some jewellery just dumped in a tray on the table. Now I have a little browse and I pull out a nice little piece of silver for 50 pence. It's 6.5 grams so less than 10 pence a gram. Absolutely perfect. 6.5 grams may not sound a lot um, up front but believe me it ends up to be kilos throughout the year. This next stall I'm uh, approaching here now has a group of jewellery. As you can see it's just laid out, costume, fake and actually two pieces of real. First piece I picked up is even in an Ernest Jones jeweller's box so anybody with common sense really would know that that's gold or silver. Um, the, ne the next piece I purchased is a silver belcher chain. Now combined the two pieces didn't cost me a pound um, off this table. As you can see the belcher chain is 19.6 grams. Amazing weight for the money and the Ernest Jones jewellery it could have been white gold but turned out to be silver sadly I've included um, a photograph now of over half a kilo of silver and gold that's been purchased from the boot sales just to give you an idea we're still on the same stall as I purchased the decanter off earlier however what you're looking at here are a pair of solid copper planters for the garden they are Middle Eastern um, early to mid 19th century hand beaten and hand engraved these are right up my street. I love early metal wear, but at £50, even for what they are, it was a bit expensive for me. Finally, you're on this stall now. Um, I didn't purchase these um, bayonets. There's a good group from the AKE family all the way up to the Mauser. Um, they were a nice selection of bayonets, but I put them in just to show you, yet again, another area you can buy on a boot sale.